Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Telequarium presentation. My name is Darren, and what we're going to do today is another little craft time. We're going to be making a grunt sculpin out of clay. And you can see right behind me, there is a grunt sculpin uh, in the video. And uh, so we're going to take a close look at these animals before we uh, create them out of clay. But let me show you what materials I have. Uh, just in case you're watching the recorded version and you need to pause the video to see uh, what materials you're, you're going to want to have available. So I have uh, about a half fist sized lump of kind of a light orangey sort of peach colored clay. I've got another smaller piece of kind of a brownish gray, a darker color. That's going to be the sort of patterning on there. I've got some orangey yellow a little bit for the fins white and orange for just the base of the tail, and then a tiny little bit of black for the eyes. Then I've got, just for my tools, I've got a little toothpick and a cutting device, just a, basically a paint scraper uh, for a cutter. Anything thin and relatively stiff will do. We don't need to do a lot of cutting for today's project, but uh, those are the basic tools. And <clears throat> uh, like I said, we're going to take a close look at the grunt sculpin. Um, to learn a little bit more about its body before we create this out of clay. So uh, the grunt sculpin, first of all, is one of my favorite fish here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. They are sort of a cryptic little creature, masters of camouflage, uh, which we'll see in a minute here. But looking closely at them, you can see they're very bony, a really kind of hard armored look to their bodies. And this allows them to mimic a couple of other creatures that we'll see in their habitat. So uh, one of those creatures is a barnacle. And uh, you may see some barnacles stuck to the rocks behind this grunt sculpin from time to time. And another one is a hermit crab. I think they tend to look a lot like hermit crabs. Um, but you can see there's a second grunt sculpin in this video. And the two are going to briefly interact with each other. You can see they sort of hobble along. But they can also swim. But they tend to sit still for most of their time, uh, which allows them, again, to uh, hide quite well using their camouflage. So uh, congratulate yourself when you find the grunt sculpin in this video. You see how it's just sort of parked right above that barnacle shell. Now, sometimes they'll actually hide in the barnacle shell, the inside of a barnacle. Now. Um, We'll take a closer look at how they move. When they're creeping along on the seafloor, and they tend to live around these kind of rocky habitat areas surrounded by small sea anemones and lots of other invertebrates like that, um, these fish will hide down in the nooks and crannies and occasionally, again, occupy uh, an empty barnacle shell. After a barnacle has died and the little house is left over, grunt sculpins love to just park their bodies inside there. But as they're moving around, you can see how they tend to kind of walk on their fins. They've got these large pectoral fins that stick out to the sides. And then their pelvic fins come out just down on the bottom. And uh, they actually kind of move along just almost hopping uh, from one spot to the next on those fins. When they want to swim, they use a little different strategy. They'll often use this dorsal fin, the one on top. There's actually two uh, dorsal fins split between the two. But they'll do what's called undulating. They kind of create a little wave pattern down that dorsal fin. And that helps to move them forward. And you can see those fin rays just waving as they go. Uh, that doesn't move them very fast. So they can also, uh, if they really need to put on a burst of speed, uh, which is a little ironic with these fish, they will use that tail. But you can see it's a pretty small tail. And because of the bony structure of their bodies, they're not very flexible. They're not like something like a salmon that's going to have a long, very flexible body. They're pretty stiff. So the amount of uh, force that they can use to propel themselves with their tail is not very high. And they tend to be somewhat slow when they're swimming. So they're going to keep to a fairly small space. And again, a lot of the time, they're actually going to just stay put. Looking at them from the side, you can see uh, the shape of their body is a pretty smooth curve, very arced on the top, and then a, like a long sloping forehead um, to create the shape of their body. So 
Uh, we're going to be creating that. And then up close, let's go ahead and move into our clay here. And I'm going to set all these smaller pieces aside for the moment, along with my toothpick. I'm going to take these two larger pieces, and I want to get them nice and soft. What I'm going to do is mix these two, not completely, but enough to create that kind of mottled pattern uh, to the grunt sculpin's body. So I'm going to just get them nice and soft, smash these two together, then give them a little twist. And I'm going to fold, wrap that together again, twist again. I'm going to keep doing this until I'm satisfied with the amount of striping that I have created for my little grunt sculpin. So if we look again on the pattern of their body, you see those sort of diagonal stripes down the side of their body. That's what we're going for. And I'm going to just continue folding and twisting until I like the design of the stripes that I've created. And I'm actually, uh, the way that I'm going to put this together, this will be the side of the sculpin's body uh, as we're looking at it. So this will be uh, the shape of its body. I'm going to do this one more time. Go ahead and give that a little bit more of a striped look. Some of the clay is starting to blend together as well. If I just kept on going, of course, I would just change all the color. I like how that's starting to look, almost a little tiger stripey. So now to smooth that out, I'm just going to kind of smash it together and then give it a little roll to blend in the striping that I've just created. And I think I like that. I'm going to smooth off the ends here a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is start to create that shape of the body. So uh, remember, again, we're going to have that kind of narrow end to the head, and they'll have a narrow tail as well, and then that strong arc on the top of the body. Uh, in addition to that, toward the tail, they've got a little stripe of white and then a little stripe of orange. So let's wait for just a moment to let this one come out to the side here so we can see the full tail and we're going to be adding the pieces of orange and white to create that tail structure as soon as we get this fish to cooperate. Come on out of the crack there. They're reluctant to leave their little spots once they find a place where they're comfortable. They really like to stay hunkered down and camouflaged, uh, and even just those little cryptic movements that they make hobbling along. Again, make them look like a little hermit crab uh, just walking on the sea floor. There you can see from the side now, we're going to have that little stripe of orange, a uh, little stripe of white first, and then the orange right at the base of the tail. So let's get back to our clay. So aggressive, you guys. All right. So I'm going to make uh, just a gentle curve on the bottom of the body and a much stronger curve on the top. And it's really pretty symmetrical from front to back, but I am going to be adding some more uh, to the tail here. So I'm creating my head end out here, a little bit narrower. And then for the tail, I'm going to take that little piece of white and just mash that right in there, and a small piece of orange, and just flatten those two right against that tail. So now I need to just get those smoothed out a little bit better, get them warmed up and blended well. And that will be the base of my tail, and we'll create the tail fin out of that as well. If you look at it from the top, it's going to have a similar kind of narrow end at both uh, the front and the back, and then kind of a widened body in the middle. There, we're getting pretty good. All right, so now we have this long sloping forehead. And if we look at it from the top, we're going to need to create this kind of angled bit. And they've got these long furrows on their head. Let's take a close look at that head. You can see there's that groove between those two uh, sides, the really bony sides of the head. So we're going to create that. 
on the head just by pressing down through the middle. And those will actually end in the eyes. So at the end of those, long bony structures, we're going to have these two bulges for the eyes. I'm going to go ahead and create a second bulge there for the left eye. There we go. Okay, and now from the side, I'm going to create an additional sort of angular bony structure to the side of the face. And if you look at it head on, we're really going to be creating this uh, shape where it's almost like a little box to their head. I'm not super concerned about the shape of my mouth quite yet. That'll be one of the last things that I do. But we're creating this very, very bony, hard plate-like structure to the head. There we go. And doesn't look much like a grunt sculpin yet, Darren, but we better keep going. All right, the next thing we need to do is add some clay for the fins. So I'm going to start with a small strip of clay for that dorsal fin. And it's going to need to go from right about the midpoint of the back right to the base of uh, the striping of the tail. So I've got this, again, kind of orangey yellow clay. And I'm going to make just a little short snake out of it. Press that in. that nice and blended. And then we're going to have a very small piece for a ventral fin, which will be kind of the opposite of that, but it's only right down here at the base of the tail. We'll have that one. And then I'm going to use the rest of this for the pectoral fins. I'm actually uh, just going to put those out to the sides. And if you look closely at the way those pectoral fins uh, look, it's really just the bony fin rays that stick out. And they almost blend right into the pelvic fins down below. <clears throat> but uh, for the sake of our clay, we can only uh, do so much. So we're actually going to just create two kind of flat fins that stick out to the sides, uh, just for practicality's sake. So I'm going to create two little short snakes here, hopefully roughly the same size. There we go. And they are going to be right down here behind. This would be the operculum. And if you want to make that a little sharper structure, you can carve right in there to show the operculum, the gill cover, the opening there. And right behind that, is going to be that pectoral fin. So we'll have one on each side. Got that operculum in. And they actually come very far forward down toward the bottom there. All right, so there we have the beginnings of all of our fins. And it's good to just double check, make sure things look symmetrical while we're building a fish here. Then uh, I'll start with the easy one, the dorsal fin. We're just going to raise up, and it's got two parts. The first, the forward part of the dorsal fin, and then down at the rear. And I've left just a tiny gap, but I'm actually going to go ahead and cut down in there with my cutting tool to make that gap more obvious between the two. So I just cut down in there and then just really get a good separation between those two dorsal fins. And remember how we saw uh, the swimming action of those dorsal fins. And I've actually just realized I did that backwards, so I'm going to redo my dorsal fin. Now that I uh, look closely at that again, I realized that I was thinking the wrong direction. So I actually want the short one in the front and the bi bigger one in the back. So I'm going to blend those back together. Beauty of clay there. And then put the separation up here toward the front. 
There we go. All right. Now to make the tail fin, I'm just going to take that bit of orange, doing a little bit of a shortcut here. I'm not adding another piece of clay just for the tail fin. But the tail fin is just a nice rounded, again, it's actually bony um, with very little skin, if any, between the rays. But because we're just using clay, uh, I'm going to have to just make a big rounded tail. There we go. The ventral fin, same way. And this one, when I set my sculpin down, it's of course just going to get smashed. So I'm going to leave it a little bit thicker and uh, not quite as long as it is in real life. Then we'll do those pectoral fins. And these, just for the sake of our clay, they're going to be very, very thin. And we're just going to try to make them as thin as we can, but still practical. And you can see my, the clay that I'm using for these fins is actually a blend of orange and yellow, and I've purposefully not quite blended it all together. That just gives it a little bit more fun look than just having a pure color to the clay. All right, now it's starting to look a lot more like a grunt sculpt in here. So uh, the last little bit here, we want to just make sure we've got the head shaped just the way we want it, that nice angular look. And we're going to create that mouth. So let's take a look again here at uh, the sides. We can see that mouth. There we go. So we're going to have these big lips. And to create that, I'm actually just going to go ahead and narrow this mouth right down to a point and then cut into it to create that separation. So I've got my cutting tool. I'm just going to cut right in there, wiggle that back and forth to create that separation. And then the top part. Uh, comes to a little bit of a point. Bottom part of the mouth is a little bit more rounded. There we go. So there's the mouth of my grunt sculpin. And then the final step here is just going to be to add the eyes. So we've got these uh, bulged out structures to house the eyes. And what we want to do is just kind of bore out the center of them nice and big. so that the eyes will fit down inside them. So we're creating eye sockets here. I want that eyeball to really fit down inside there, and then we'll have more of a, a look of skin just kind of covering the eyes as the grunt sculpins truly have. So I'm going to take that little piece of black clay, and uh, I've got more than I need here. So I just need two little tiny pieces to go right down inside those eye sockets. And you really want them to fit down inside there to create that three-dimensional look. Then just take the outer edges of those eyes and wrap it around. And you can create that look. Now their eyes actually look a little bit out to the side, so make sure you've got them just the way you want them pointed. And give a little wave to your undulating dorsal fin. A little curl to the tail. That's often how they like to sit with their tail sort of curled up like this. And there is your completed clay grunt sculpin.
Beautiful. Well, all right. Uh, again, the beauty of clay is, just like me, if you make a mistake along the way, you get to go back and redo it. Uh, if you're having trouble with your clay just being too sticky, too soft, get it back in the fridge for a little bit, uh, cool it down, and then come back to it. You'll find that it's a lot easier to work with when it's not quite so warm after having done all that mixing, especially. Uh, so you might just take little breaks and uh, let that clay cool off in between stages so that you can really work with it without just having it stick all over, to you, uh, all over your fingers. And thanks again for joining me today with this Telequarium presentation. Uh, and check out the Education Corner playlist on our YouTube channel for plenty more of the videos like these. And uh, if you would like to, um, feel free to donate. There's a link in the description of the video if you'd like to support programs like this one and everything we do here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. Thanks a bunch, and take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>